figure out the speed of this bicycle if we know the rate of the pedaling. If the cyclist is pedaling three revolutions per second and the gear connected to the pedals is five and a half inches in radius, then we know that that gear has a circumference of 11 pi inches. We can start here and then figure out how fast the chain is going and then that will help us find how fast the gear connected to the tire is going and thus how fast the tire is going. We'll answer both in feet per second as well as miles per hour. So since the circumference of the pedal gear is 11 pi inches and the cyclist is rotating three revolutions per second, every second three times the circumference is being traced by points on the edge of that gear. So that gear is moving 33 times pi inches per second. That's also how fast the chain is going and thus how fast that littler gear connected to the tire is going. Since the chain is causing that little gear to move at the same pace, that little gear has a circumference of four pi inches because its radius is only two inches. So if I divide the speed 33 times pi inches per second, by the circumference of that little gear that's connected to the tire, four pi inches, I figure out that that little gear is turning 8.25 revolutions every second. So the little gear that's connected to the tire is going around 8.25 times every second. But that little gear is connected to the tire, and so the tire is also going 8.25 revolutions every second. The tire has a radius of 16 inches, and so it has a circumference of 32 times pi inches. If I take 8.25 and I multiply by the circumference, I get how fast the tire is going in inches per second. That is, the tire is turning at 264 times pi inches per second. It's a little difficult for us to picture how fast 264 times pi inches per second is. So let's convert that to miles per hour using unit analysis. One foot is equal to 12 inches. So if I multiply by the fraction one foot in the numerator and 12 inches in the denominator, the inches cancel out, leaving me feet, but I really want miles and not feet. So then I know that one mile is equivalent to 5,280 feet. If I multiply by the fraction one mile over 5,280 feet, the unit of feet cancel, leaving me the unit of miles. Now I need to get rid of the unit of seconds and convert it to hours. There are 3,600 3, seconds in one hour. So if I multiply by the fraction 3,600 seconds over one hour, the seconds cancel, and I am left with 264 times pi times 1 times 1 times 3,600 miles, and then in the denominator, 1 times 12 times 5,280 times 1 is 63,360 hours. If you reduce that and, and rounded off as a decimal, we get 47.12 miles per hour. So he's going kind of at a racer's speed pace, but a pace that is somewhat reasonable. It might be kind of interesting to come up with a function that tells us how far we've gone in terms of how many pushes of the pedal we've made. So let's convert our information to miles per second. And the reason why is because we were given information about revolutions in terms of seconds. We're told that we revolve three times per second or three revolutions per second. So we were going 264 times pi inches per second. We want miles per second because we want our function to tell us distance in miles in terms of how many times we pedaled. So again, doing unit analysis, one foot is still equal to 12 inches. So multiply by one over 12 and the inches cancel out. One mile is still equal to 5,280 feet. So multiply by the fraction one mile over 5,280 feet and the feet cancel. 
and that gives us 264 times pi over 63,360 seconds. So that's giving us a speed in miles per second. But we're going around three revolutions per second. So if we take that speed of 264 times pi over 63,360 miles per second, and we multiply by the fraction one second over three revolutions, notice the seconds cancel out, and I get a ratio of miles per revolution. That is equal to a distance in the numerator and number of pedals or revolutions in the denominator. So we can take this proportion and we can solve it for D by multiplying both sides by the N. So we then get 264 times pi times the variable N, which is our number of pedals, over 190,080, and that will give us our distance in miles that we go per N pedals. If you reduce that, 264 actually goes evenly into 190,080, and that cleans up as pi times n over 720. In working through something like this, it's always helpful if we could check our answer to see if we actually um, made any mistakes or not. So our function is f of n equals n times pi over 720. If we put three revolutions in for the n, then we will get three times pi over 720 miles per second. And then if you convert miles per second to miles per hour by multiplying by 3,600, we get our 47.12 miles per hour back. So our function checks. We already knew that this bicycle was going 47.12 miles per hour, and we knew that that was with three pedals per second. If we instead wanted a function that gave us distance in terms of time, that makes sense that we might be interested in that, then we want to go back to our speed in distance per second. So we had already figured out earlier that the bicycle was moving at 264 pi over 63,360 miles per second. So that is a distance in the numerator and time in seconds in the denominator. So just like with the other problem where we were trying to solve for D, we want to take D over T and multiply both sides by T. And that will give us 264 times pi times the variable T over 63,360. That will equal the distance in miles. Again, cleaning that up, the 264 divides evenly into the 63,360. And so our function cleaned up is f of t equals pi times t over 240. If I put 3,600 seconds in, i.e. an hour, I get 47.12 miles. So once again, we have the correct function. It checks out. Mm -hmm.